Welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll be explaining you SPI protocol and this is what we are using it for serial communication. My dear students, SPI protocol that we can establish by having four wires and in this video, I'll explain you what are the basics of this SPI protocol, how we can configure those four wires for communication using SPI protocol. Then I'll explain you what are the modes which is there with SPI protocol and at last we will discuss about what are the advantages and disadvantages are there with this SPI protocol. So let us see first what are the basics which is there with SPI protocol. So my dear students, here SPI means Serial Peripheral Interface Bus. Here SPI is used for half as well as full duplex serial communication. I'll explain you how we can have half duplex as well as how we can have full duplex serial communication using SPI protocol. Here it is providing synchronous communication. Why the reason is along with the data, we also provide clock. So along with the clock, as we are providing data, that will be synchronous communication. Here you'll be observing, we establish this communication using four wires. In majority of cases, you'll be observing we are having one master and multiple slaves but it is also supporting multiple master configuration. My dear students, this protocol is used for short range communication only. Like in embedded system with single board, you may have one microcontroller along with that you will be interfacing one display. So on board communication that we have it by using this SPI protocol. Here, you should know my dear students, this protocol supports maximum speed up to 10 Mbps and that is far better compared to I2C protocol in terms of bandwidth. Here you will be observing, master is always providing clock synchronization. So when you have communication in between master and slave, at that time, master will give clock signal, right? Here SPI is supporting 8 and 16 bits of data frame format. So here when you want to communicate at the time, two data frame formats are available, 8 bits and 16 bits. Let us try to understand how we can configure two devices using SPI protocol. So here I'm having master and here I'm having slave. See master will select slave, for that you'll be having slave select line or you can say chip select line. So here by making this line active low, master can select any slave. As if multiple slaves are available over here, then those slaves are also connected with separate slave select line, right? Common slave select line cannot be connected over here. You will have to connect separate slave select line for another slave. Here, my dear students, master will provide serial clock over here. So inside master, there will be clock generator and that clock will be given to slave. Here another two lines, those are there for data communication. So first is MOSI, master out slave in, in that master will send data to slave. And second line that is there regarding MISO means here master will read data from the slave means master in slave out. Now my dear students, let us try to understand first how this protocol is providing half duplex communication. In half duplex communication, master will send data to slave at that time, master will not read data from the slave. So only one direction communication is happening. Once master is completing its communication in terms of sending data, after that slave can send data over here on MISO. So that is half duplex. But here this protocol is also supporting full duplex. In that master can send data at the same time, slave can also send data to master. So both are happening simultaneously means it is full duplex serial communication. Now let us try to understand how that is happening. So inside master and inside slave, there will be shift resistor. So here I'm drawing one shift resistor by animation you see and in that shift resistor here MOSI that is connected over here with that shift resistor and that MOSI 
is also connected inside slave with shift register and input given over here with master that will be output provided by slave with same shift register. Both of this shift register are connected with clock generator. So the clock provided by master that is given to that shift register and that same clock that will be given to this shift register inside slave. First of all master will select slave by making this line active low. What it means? Now master has selected this slave. After that with respect to clock master will shift that shift register data and it will go serial out over here and that will go inside shift register of slave which is having same clock. Right. So here my dear students same shift register which is there inside slave that will be providing output over here and that will be input to master. So here you can swap data from master to slave. For example, if you have 40 hex over here and 60 hex over here inside slave, then after 8 clocks, 8 bits will get swapped over here with respect to clock, right? And here that shift register will exchange data, right? So that is how communication is happening inside. Now, my dear students, this communication is happening with respect to four different modes and that is happening with respect to clock signal. So to understand modes of SPI protocol, we need to understand what is clock signal of SPI protocol for that two parameters that you need to understand clock polarity that is CPOL and clock phase that is CPHA. Here we are providing slave select is equals to logic low for establishment of communication in between master and slave. And here as we provide that slave select is equals to zero, MOSI as well as MISO both can exchange data in full duplex mode. So here I am showing you data, right? But that is happening with respect to clock. So with respect to clock, there are four modes. Here see I have shown four modes, mode 0, mode 1, mode 2 and mode 3. Let us try to understand first how CPOL means clock polarity is there. As if clock signal is active low by default, in that case you can say CPOL is 0. See here it is 0 as it is logic low by default. Here also CPOL is 0. Why the reason is it is logic low by default. Here you see CPOL is 1. Why the reason is it is logic high by default. Here also CPOL is 1. Why the reason is this clock is active high by default. Now let us try to understand how clock phase is there. So when with first rising or falling age as if data read or write is happening over here then you can say CP H A that is 0. Like you see here clock phase is 0 by default but with first rising age here data read is happening right D7 is getting read. Here also you see with rising age it is happening. What it means? Clock phase is 0. If you observe CPOL that is 1 but here you see with first falling age data read is happening. What it means? CPHA means clock phase that is 0. If that data read is happening after 180 degree phase of clock then you can say CPHA is 1. Like you see here we have clock and in that polarity is logic 0 by default. After 180 degree you see here data read is happening means CPHA that is 1. If you observe here clock polarity is 1. But after 180 degree phase you see data read is happening. What it means CPHA is 1. So that is how you can identify what is clock polarity and what is clock phase. And based on that, if it is 0, 0, mode 0 will be there. If it is 0, 1, mode 1 will be there. If it is 1, 0, mode 2 will be there. And if it is 1, 1, then mode 3 will be there. And these modes that we can configure inside any embedded system, right? Now, my dear students, let us discuss advantages and disadvantages. So when we talk about advantages, then here you should know we don't need to have any start and stop bits. 
so you don't have any redundancy over here with SPI protocol. Here SPI can work with full duplex mode as I have explained. At the same time we can have transmission as well as reception. Here you will be observing signals are unidirectional and that allows easy isolation. So you see here all the signals are unidirectional, right? So that gives you easy isolation. When we talk about disadvantages, then you should know here my dear students, for two device communication, we need to have four wires. And as if you increase multiple slaves, then wires will increase for slave select. Here, these three lines that will be common for other slaves, but these slave select lines that will increase as you increase number of slaves. Here, you will be having only one master in majority of cases and multiple slave select lines required for multiple slaves and this protocol does not provide you error detection. And here, you don't have any acknowledgement for confirmation of data received or not. Right, so that is how this SPI protocol is there with us. So I think now my dear students, it is clear to you how SPI protocol is there. Still, if any confusion is there, just post that in comment box. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.